Dan Lebatard Stugatz This is the Dan Lebatard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio We love his work Kenny G with us again as has become a Super Bowl tradition We have fallen in love with this man He's told us a lot of great stories A couple just paid for him to play 45 minutes, a husband, a wife, a child, a hotel room in Vegas. He did a private show like that. He's told the stories. Uh, and now, Kenny, thank you for being on with us again. Um, can you tell us the craziest way a fan has tried to get into Kenny's life? Uh, well, I, I do get to see some uh, Polaroid pictures in, uh, in um, hotel gyms when guys tell me that they've done some things with their significant other to my music, and they show me pictures of it, and I, I, I don't mind that. Okay, that's wow. all right. That's uh, yeah. so you, so you, you. Wait a minute, go on. You like this <laughs> to be just in the gym working out, and a guy comes over and says, "Look at what I have made love to to your music." Something like that. Yeah, they'll show me some pictures. Yeah, listen, here's here's a nice picture of my whatever, and uh, you know we were using your music when we did whatever. And what's the typical response from you after yeah, that happens? I mean, how do you, do you why do you say you don't mind that? I would mind that. I, you give him a fist, fist pound, you walk around, you're like, I'm, yeah, I'm just trying to get my sprints in. What is it? <laughs> well, my reaction is, do you have more pictures to show me? Okay, very good. So you're very receptive. Uh, you're dirty. Very receptive. Yeah, Kenny G is dirty. Also, but that story stinks in terms of backstage shenanigans for a star musician. Like that. that I know. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I'm a sax player. What, what do you what do you expect okay. them to do? Right. Okay, so it doesn't work that way for you though. But you're no, no, nah, not 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 like that. No, I'm not like a big rap star where I'm sure they have some serious stories. But that's kept me out of the news. I think. Uh, yeah, I guess we could look at. You're it wondering that way. if he has groupies and stuff like yeah, that. Well, why right? wouldn't Kenny G uh, have I, groupies? I would imagine that he would, yeah. especially Kenny G. I, I, yeah. I don't know why. I don't understand. Even can you explain? I, it, so the G stands. For? You're saying the the sax is you know it's sexy, like. I mean, I know it's sexy. Um, I don't know. You know, maybe who knows? Maybe it's the music. Maybe the music's just too. Too mellow and beautiful, and it doesn't uh, bring that out of people. I don't know, which is fine by me. I'm, I'm happy to do the music that I do. I understand. I'm not judging you. It's just, I, is anyone else surprised <laughs> by this? Gam, I'll put it on the poll at Levitard I, I feel Show. Judged. I feel a little judged. Well, I, I'm sorry, I'm judging sorry, you, sorry, and, but sorry. I'm just surprised to hear that uh, that Kenny G has not parlayed his saxophone success into uh, magical groupies. Well, I mean, well, maybe he has. I think it's just not, you know, they're not, it's not backstage at a concert. I mean, Kenny, I'm sure you parlayed that's it not, into some good not. times, right? <laughs> uh, you better have, Kenny. When you, when, you, when you say the word parlay, are we starting to speak French now? Is that what we're doing? <laughs> you put the lay in parlay, Kenny. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's good. Uh, thank hey, you. I'm like a writer. <laughs> Used to be. <laughs> that was good. That was a great one right there. Good. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Took a while. Kenny G with us on ESPN Radio. Um, I. What are you pointing to there, Mike? What are you pointing to? You got a song for Kenny G? What's the single most important thing the <laughs> no, Eagles have to do no, to beat the Patriots? No, we can't do that no, again no, to not him. Yet, not yet. No. Wait, is that it? Am I, is this over now? No, no, it's no. never over, Kenny. No, we want to talk well, to you listen, forever. I, I, I see where this this conversation is going. So let me give you a little bit of um, a little a little bit of tidbits here. So we were talking yesterday about flying, right? We were talking about flying an airplane. So I do have a little airplane that I fly, and the name of the airplane. It's made by De Havilland of Canada, and the plane is called a beaver. <laughs> Kenny, Kenny, you're dangerous. Look how happy he is. Look how happy Kenny He's G is. He's working blue. Now Kenny I'm G. happy. <laughs> Kenny G is working blue. I can't imagine why when the ladies weren't lined up backstage. Yeah, baby. <laughs> uh, I had, I, Stugatz was quiet for five seconds. It was awesome. How? I, how does this work? This is what I also don't understand. You're flying your own private planes. How are there not groupies? I don't mean to badger you about this. <laughs> Wait, don't you want to ask me more questions about the beaver? Okay, fine. <laughs> Tell me more about the beaver, Kenny. Okay, so this airplane is called the Havilland Beaver. It's a it's a great plane. It's got amphibs on it, which means that it lands on water, it lands on land. And the great thing about flying this plane, it's a vintage plane. It's a beautiful plane. Like, if you ever saw that movie, like, what is it called? Six Nights, Seven Days, Six Nights with Harrison Ford. That's the same plane. So when this lands... 
notoriously, I mean, every time I land, somebody on the radio says something like, nice beaver. <laughs> <laughs> and then I have a comeback line. If you're ready, if you're ready, I'll. We are. I don't know if we're ready. Are we ready? This is Kenny G on Disney Radio. But let's see if we're ready. Oh wait, should I not be talking like this? No, no that's fine. Yeah, it's we fine. Love it. I love that Kenny G is working blue. I'm going to follow you wherever this goes. <laughs> so if this ends us all, I'm good with that. I'm not. Okay, but this is all. This is all legit. This is the Haviland Beaver. It, the people say nice Beaver. They always say to me, and my pick, my comeback line is, "Thank you. Just had it waxed." Uh-oh. Am I over? Is that it? No. We're off the air now. <laughs> Sorry about that. What do you mean? You got the Wait, highest honor of the show. Are we over yet? I just, this is the part that I, and I know I'm stuck on it, Kenny, and I'm sorry to bother you with it, but well, you're, you you're, no, you're, you're, you're landing an amphibious plane in the water. You're getting out and playing sexy sax music that sells 12 million copies when it's Brazilian night. Amphibious. Uh, amphibious. That's a fun. It is. I didn't say it correctly, but it's amphibious. And uh, You should fun. land wherever you want to land, and there should be groupies awaiting you, is all I'm saying, Kenny. Thank, thank you. I appreciate that. So we know that's, that's great. I'm glad you're on my side about that. That's wonderful. I, I'm, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling loved to this morning by you. you. This is great. All right. This is shocking to us. I mean, it really is. It's shocking. Okay. I, I, Dan, I'm with you. I, I figured he just had groupies that came backstage after every concert. Okay. I mean, he's Put sexy. Put on the poll, Guillermo. Yeah, he is sexy. We'll talk to you uh, tomorrow, okay, Kenny? Okay, sounds good. All right. All right very good. Right. Estu hey, Gats wants a new boat. Time for some more ads. The strangest interview yet with uh, Kenny G. Uh, is it? I feel like it was. Uh, uh, was that not enjoyable? Did you guys not enjoy that? No, uh, I was fine. Uh, are we running out of things really to talk like about? That with guy. Him? I feel like we're delighted by him. Yeah. So we just like being his company. And he and he, and and Mike did it right when he just did the fake Alan Thick. Fake Alan Thick was proudly cheesy. This is a hard thing to pull off. It's a hard thing to pull off. Not many people do it. Proud cheesy, proudly cheesy, and 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 great. Yeah, he also had the exact same routine about waxing a beaver. No, no, the, exact same right, routine. The exact, the exact same routine. Yeah. But would you agree that that's a tough thing to pull off, pull off? The the guy who is who knows he's giving you a little bit of cheese and is enjoying giving you a little bit of cheese and it's funny and everyone likes the guy. Uh, yeah, that's very difficult. That was Alan. Off. He Thick. does it well though, man. That's, that was Alan Thick, man. Oh, no doubt. Kenny has Kenny G replaced Alan Thick as our beloved friend of the show, most beloved friend of the show. Oh, Cody's going to get mad at this again. No, that's a high honor to replace Alan Thicke. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, God rest his soul. Thank you, Greg. Are you upset, though? It had to be said. Why would I be upset? It's good that you let his soul rest, that God and you agreed to let his soul rest. Blink! Allow me to quote. I don't know what happened. What happened is this is what happened. He got very excited about soccer the first hour of the show. He talked a lot, and he's just petered out since then. Yeah. He forgets that he's talking into the microphone. He got out all of his enthusiasm. He's got nothing left in the tank. <laughs> like it, He I, peaked at 9.30 well, a.m.? I'm, I'm on a word count, and so when I run out of words, uh, I have to budget them. Oh. Shockier! Go get in the penalty box. Oh, no. We don't have a penalty box anymore, do we? Yes. Go get in the penalty box, right. please. That's fine. I got my sandwich half eaten out there anyway. All right. <laughs> He's the show killer. That's what my father was shouting there. Show killer! You're having such a good show, you were. I mean, right up until... I mean, serious. The 9 o'clock hour was informed, as informed as you've ever been. No, what happened is... The then first, you didn't speak no, in the 11 o'clock hour. The segment of the show, <laughs> right. he was excited about soccer and MLS. He came in with his media pass. And he gave us 15 glorious minutes, and it's all he had in the tank. He's done. Go sit in the penalty box. He's so mad at you right now. I mean, but come on. He's been unusually terrible the last two segments, hasn't he? Hi, this is Papi. Do you know that my TV show, Highly Questionable, is not only on ESPN2 every day at 4.30 Eastern. It is also available as a podcast. You can listen or subscribe to the Highly Questionable podcast on ESPN app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. 
Don Lebatard. Come in here and tickle. Hurry up and tickle him till the end of the oh, segment. My doctor, uh, Dr. McGillicuddy said this could be bad oh, for my for heart. The... <laughs> could be bad for my heart. Stugats. <laughs> having a heart attack. <laughs> tickle him. Tickle him more. Tickle him more. Right to the end of the segment. Heart attack in it. This is the Don Lebatard Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. So Tom Brady may or may not have gotten Jimmy Garoppolo traded depending on what you want to believe. But let me read this story to you from the New York Post. Megan Kelly, evidently, according to the New York Post, threw an Olympic fit when NBC offered the job of anchoring next month's Winter Olympics opening ceremony to Katie Couric. Sources have clu- exclusively told Page Six. Television insiders say that Kelly insisted when signing her $23 million a year contract with NBC last spring that she could not be forced to do special events such as the Winter Games in South Korea. But once Today Show vet Matt Lauer, who usually helmed special coverage, was ousted in November over sexual misconduct allegations, Kelly assumed she was next in line for the plum assignments. All the stuff that happens in sports, all the stuff that happens at $23 million a year with uh, Megan Kelly and Katie Couric, like these are all very human things, are they not? It doesn't matter the amount of money that sports tries to place these things within a team construct, but within that team construct, you will find all sorts of Megan Kellys and Katie Couric's that don't want to be on the same team. Right, ego gets in the way, of mm-hmm. course, yes. That's natural. I know, but you, you're you asked to manage it in sports in a way that will we will rain down judgment when it is the most normal thing in the world. No matter how much money Megan Kelly makes, she's still got this. The money isn't enough. Somewhere within her, she has the need that she's got to get the plum assignment over Katie Couric as an adult, uh, you know, later in life, late in her career. This isn't a child. Is it that or is it her maybe trying to validate the fact that she's being paid so much by NBC and really hasn't produced anything? Like, is there maybe a part of her that's thinking, hey, I've done nothing well, here? Let me, let me ask you guys this question. The idea of paying $23 million for anyone, given what happened to Matt Lauer in network television, are you guys down with that for the rest of the time? Like, is that a good investment for anybody to be making in anything? Like, how many of these people on network television are ratings movers in the 2018 when everyone's headed to Hulu and Netflix and I'm going to watch television on my time, not your time? That's a good question. Um, Man. But, I mean, I feel like that industry is... Am I wrong when I say with Matt Lauer, what he takes is that person? Am I wrong when I say Michael Strahan can have good media jobs and everything else, but the person who you hire to be your $30 million face of a network, that that person, now that Brian Williams is gone, like that, 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 none of that stuff matters anymore. That giving $23 million to Megyn Kelly is stupid, no matter who Megyn Kelly actually is. Yeah. What's the link, though, between salary and ratings? Like, is there an appreciable drop because of the Matt Lauer controversy? Like, since he's been canned, have they seen a ratings drop? I I don't know. Um, I don't know. In fact, I think today's ratings were up right after it happened. I don't know what's happened since. Anderson Cooper is a guy. I don't know what he's being paid, but he is the face of a network. Um, And I'm certain he's been being paid a lot of is money. He, is Anderson Cooper the face or is it? Uh, I mean, is Don he, Lemon will probably disagree, but I think it's Anderson Wolf Cooper. Wolf Blitzer so would have Jake Tapper. I, I think it's Anderson Cooper, though. I, I think know. you think CNN and you think Anderson Cooper. I That's do. what you think. Yeah, and I think there's three people Wolf that thinks? disagree. Oh, no, no, I'm certain Wolf <laughs> disagrees. I'm certain of that. I think Aaron Burnett also disagrees. Oh, come on. I agree. Cooper. Uh, Guillermo, put it on the poll. Does Wolf Blitzer think Anderson Cooper is the face of CNN? It's a great question. (laughs) I'd love the idea of Wolf Blitzer sitting around being like this, Anderson. (laughs) Son of glory of Vanderbilt. My name's Wolf, man. You know how hard it is to to not be a DJ in the 70s? To be a guy in news in 2018, and my name is Wolf. Especially in this day and age. We need an athlete named Wolf. Wolf tell me Blitzer. I'm wrong. What a great name. Oh, my God. A, a football name. player? A pass rusher? Wait a Wolf minute. Blitzer. Tell me. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is, wait, that can't oh my be. Hold God. on. Let's think about it. That's not his real name, is it? Is that a stage name? His name is his name like Ed or Ernie? Oh, Wolf oh, Isaac Wolf. Blitzer. Yeah. That's Wolf, wait a minute. What's a better athlete name in the history of names than Wolf Blitzer? Like, that's a linebacker. Mm-hmm. That guy can play. Hey, Rogue Scout in Missouri, Stu Gott, get on the phone. To, yes. Get, get on the phone to the Packers. You found a linebacker, I'm Rogue out, Scout. I'm out here on the frozen tundra and 
Wisconsin. And I'm calling a coach. I'm calling Nick Saban. Nick, listen, I'm trying to get into the business. I'm a rogue agent. I've got a kid I'm watching right now. I've never seen anyone pa- rush the quarterback the way this kid does. And his name is Wolf Blitzer. <laughs> Bill Parcells, real name is Dwayne. What? Ah, that's not true. What? That's not, not true. Even William. That's not true. <laughs> that's not true. What are you saying there? You blaspheme the against name. the tuna. He went to high school. He switched high schools. One of the kids at the high school looked like him. His name was Bill. People confused him as Bill. And he was like, hmm, I like that name. Jack in it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Bill Parcells is actually Dwayne Parcells? Yeah. yeah Dwayne, That's what yeah. Dominique Foxworth is alleging. Kind of ruins the title, the two Bills. Yo, I tweeted that out. And Chris Mortensen, so I tweeted out people going crazy like, what? This is great. Chris Mortensen retweeted, quote, quote retweeted me and said, He's told that story a thousand times. I got oh, beef with Mort. Mort, Mort and oh, I got beef. Mort, wait a minute. Guy, Hold guy. on a second. Oh, Hold on. Are you guys aware? Okay, this is twofold. First of all, did thank, you? Thank you, Dominique Foxworth. Thank you, Dominique. You're welcome. Put on Bye. the poll, please, at Levitard Show. Did you know Bill Parcells' real name was Dwayne? Is it D-U-A-N-E or yep. is it D-W-Y-A-N-E? Come on. Come on, Stu. <laughs> I mean, come on, Dan. <laughs> like, like, hey, hey, big please. guy. Big guy. <laughs> big guy. Thank you. You know what his name is, big guy. All right, you know but, how he spells it. Right, He's not a you. W type of fella. All right, Did bye. you catch that, Dominique, earlier in the show when uh, when Stefan Diggs called me big guy? Did you also catch that he had no idea what my name was? That's that's did. called making a joke, Dan. Yeah, that's how he knew the joke. No, I'm <laughs> saying, did you also catch it in real time? I know the I, joke you're making. I sure did, handsome. All right, thank you, Chief. <laughs> Buddy. Right. There he is. Fella. Yeah. Jamie Foxx's real name is Eric. Homeboy. Is that right? Yeah. Jamie Foxx's name, real name is Eric? Yep. Yeah, Coachies. Do you guys know that Bill Belichick's real last name isn't Belichick? Get out of here. He no. doesn't pronounce it Belichick. That's enough. Bruno Mars's real uh, name is Pete. <laughs> All right. We always enjoy the company of Ron McGill. If you want to talk to him, 786-456-4837 is the telephone number. A lot of our listeners have been talking about a meme that's making its way around the Internet, a hypothetical scenario that's been making its way through social media. Here is the scenario. You must pick two of these options to defend you while the rest are coming to kill you. Okay. From the options, these are your options. Okay. You get 50 Hawks. You get 10 crocodiles, you get three brown bears, you get seven Cape Buffalo, you get one hunter with a shotgun, unlimited ammo, one hunter with a shotgun, Ooh, that's key. unlimited ammo, 15 wolves, you can have 10,000 rats, you can have five gorillas, or you could have four lions. You're only allowed to pick two of those categories. Two are defending you. The rest are coming to kill you. Well, the rest are coming after you. Uh, shotgun, definitely. Unlimited amount of bullets. I mean, that ain't helping you against 10,000 rats. What if I choose the 10,000 rats? So now you've got it. So you're going with 10,000 rats and shotguns? I mean, and I want to. You're going to try and kill brown bears and crocodiles with your rats? With my shotgun. How about your 50 hawks? I'm the going f- with hawks and 15 wolf blitzers. <laughs> So Ron McGill is with us now from Zoo Miami. Who pick? Who do you pick, Ron, from among well, that group? Sure. Well, the easy one, of course, is the hunter with unlimited ammo. Okay, that's the deadliest one. He's the one who's going to be take out the big thing. The second choice is difficult. It's between 15 wolves and 10,000 rats. I am going to go with the 15 wolves. Now, there's a couple things you need to, to clarify here. First of all, what's the distance between the ones coming to kill you and the ones that are with you to defend you? Because... That needs to know the time. If you've got a hunter with unlimited bullets, I mean, how much time is he going to have to shoot? Okay, that's you know, if you, if it's fifty yards between the two, I mean, how's that? How's that going? Because a hunter can take out three bears in three shots. Boom, 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 you're done. Okay, that's easy. That's an easy run. Now it's a little more difficult. It's like fifty hawks because they're coming out of the sky. But a hawk is not going to give you a fatal injury. Okay, you're going to get cut up really badly. You're going to get a lot of puncture holes. But all you need to do is have the the, the, the hunter's going to take out a few of those hawks, but then the ones that hit you, you've got to take them, throw them to the ground so the wolves can get them right away. The wolves are going to work like a team. That's easy. With The, the scariest one here is the 10,000 rats. That's what I'm Again. saying. See, here's the thing. If I've got a hunter and I've got, yes. 
these but, 15 but listen, wolves Dan, and what's coming is 10,000 rats. I, I feel yeah, like I'm Dan, done. Dan, listen, listen, Dan, listen. you got a hunter with a shotgun. So a shotgun has got a shell that's going to spray out. Each shot's going to take out a bunch of rats and injure a bunch of other ones, okay? No rat is going to give you a fatal injury. What you got to do is you got to protect your car- carotid artery, and you're going to have to have a peace of mind. Listen, this is not going to end well, okay? You're going to end up in the hospital. You're going to bleed. You're going to get all kinds of diseases and stuff, but you can survive it. If you have the peace of mind to say, every time a rat hits, throw it to the ground, and the wolves are there. Boom, boom, boom. They're biting. And the guy's still shooting. And you, you just got to keep throwing. Throw it to the ground. Throw it to the ground. Throw it to the ground. And hope that as time goes, that the wolves get him. The wolves can kill a bunch really quickly. It's one bite, kills a rat. And you got 15 wolves. So they're going at them. The rats are going to try to avoid the wolves. They're not going to come right at you right away. So those wolves create a circle around you. That works. The hunters, again, yeah, spray yeah, the okay. shotgun. All right. But what about the crocodiles and the bears and the lions crocodiles and all easy. the crocodiles other bleep that's falling out no, of the sky? Because now I got 50 because, hawks in my kitchen. Listen, and all I've got is, so is fear in my heart. And listen to facts, okay? A crocodile, if there's any kind of distance between you and a crocodile, you can outmaneuver a crocodile. That's the easy one. Uh-huh. There's a hunter. Just take them out, okay? The Cape Buffalo, again, a hunter can take out two or three that's of those right. pretty quickly. Well, and, right, but the bear is trying to kill me while I'm doing this to the crocodile, and he's got his friends with it. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. What are you saying? You're saying all the rest are coming at you at once? Yes! Yes, all of them. Everybody's Everything. coming. Everybody. Which part oh, of no, you? Wait a minute. Dead. All you're, the... dead. you're dead. You're dead, Dan. Dan, that's the dumbest you... meme I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Wait, that's so there's the no combination in what no, you're saying? There's, there's no, no combination. Is there, a... there is no combination. Everyone else is coming. You're dead. No, Dan, you're dead. That's a stupid meme. That's the dumbest <laughs> meme in the world. It didn't sound you're so dead. stupid for the chance. last four minutes. It sounded amazing. Uh, you're in the middle of it just yeah, going, hey, bear. Hey, bear. You're you, you quack. You're in the middle of it with but, instead of a shotgun. You just want to be in front of the bear waving your arms going, hey, bear. Hey, bear. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, Are you done? Mike, you're on. <laughs> Mike, you're on with Ron McGill. Go ahead, Mike. Hey, Ron. Are belly buttons strictly the trait of mammals? Um, I believe no, no, they're not. As a matter of fact, because like crocodiles, for instance, come out of an egg and they will have a yolk sac attached to it. They have an umbilicus attached to it. It becomes very, very well hidden as the animal gets older, but it does have a belly button. So even even birds, even reptiles do have a yolk sac that attaches to their abdominal, uh, you know, cavity that gives them food that as they, old, as they get older, that, that comes off and disappears. But they all have belly buttons, so to speak. Brian, you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead. Hey, Ron. Uh, first of all, I went to Zoo Miami the other day. I love what you guys are doing to the place. Uh, question. My wife is nine, well, eight months pregnant. She's miserable. Is there any other animal out there that changes their mood when they get really pregnant? Because she's crazy. Yeah, well, a lot of animals do. A lot of animals uh, get quite moody. Hormones do a lot of things to a lot of different animals. So your wife isn't alone. It's not just a human trait. It's a, it's a trait throughout the animal kingdom, especially in mammals, as these animals get more and more into their, into their uh, um, pregnancy. Uh, the hormones start changing their attitudes, changing their appetites, changing their reaction to different things. So don't feel alone. Uh, Robert, you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Hey, Ron. My daughter has a uh, male guinea pig named Fat Chris. I want to get her another guinea pig. Should I get a male guinea pig and name it Guillermo or a female and name it Allison? (laughs) Don't get a female because then you're going to have a ton of them, and you don't need that. Uh, And the male sometimes will fight, so you're going to have to have an acclimation period there. It's a kind of experimentation. But if you're going to have to get another one, get another male or get two females because male and female, you're just going to have a lot of guinea pigs. Trust me. Eddie C., you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead. Hey, Ron, I have a butterfly garden, and I now also have uh, a couple of iguanas that are digging little tunnels under my driveway, and I think they keep eating the caterpillars right before they cocoon. Is there something I can do without killing the iguanas to deter them? You know, there's a lot of these homemade remedies, so, so to speak. I don't know of any of them that really work. A lot of them are just these urban myths. Uh, unfortunately, iguanas can be very destructive, not in just eating the plants and eating different things around the plants, but like you say, uh, tunneling under your driveway, causing things, ca- causing all kinds of erosion problems. That's why I try to tell people, listen, folks, these animals do not belong here. You know, I've dedicated my life to protecting animals, but at the end of the day, they are destructive, they are doing damage to our natural environment, and I'm in favor of humanely dispatching them. I know it sounds terrible to say, but that's the bottom line. We've got to look at the general health of the environment and wow. the place that they don't Wait a belong. Minute. You are, you'd think we should get rid of iguanas. I do, absolutely. 
I did not I know that. That's no, shocking. No, because Ron's been saying this. I used to complain that I had two iguanas in my backyard. One of them almost attacked one of my kids. And I remember Ron saying the same thing no, back then no, when I asked him about I, it. Yeah, I just, I've yeah, never. But the difference is that, Sue Gats, you sometimes listen to me. Dan never does. I, I'm just <laughs> stunned that you are calling for the eradication of iguanas in South Florida. I am. Wow. All right. Very good. Shocking. Bold stance. I love it. Paul, you're on with Ron McGill of Zoo Miami. Go ahead. Hey, Ron. If Jaws was about a walrus instead of a shark, would we be just as scared as walruses as we currently are of sharks? Thanks. <laughs> That's a good question, man. <laughs> I mean, they are. They got the whiskers, question, the yeah. fangs. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The whiskers, the fangs. And oh, also, the, you know, occasionally, uh, you know, sharks do kill people. But, uh, but the tusks. It's a fun. Imagine putting the music behind the walrus, though. Don't, uh, yeah, yeah. don't uh, imagine. Yeah, I, I think, I think yeah, he's right. Yeah. yeah, I think he might be right. Fine, All right, let's look at this video. Fine. What am I being fined for? What am I being fined for? <laughs> you call them Probably fangs. Probably being mean to me. Okay. And for being mean. Fangs, they're tusks. And you have another one from earlier. I forget. It's just $20. Though. All right, so uh, let's go ahead, uh, Ron. And okay, here we go. Look at play the by play oh, of today's video. This. It's a rat taking a... Uh, are you serious? Oh, oh my no. God! This rat's actually enjoying giving himself a shot. Look, he's rubbing under his arm. That can't he's be right. A soap. He's that's rubbing. that, that is amazing. No, that's oh special effects. Is that real? That can't that be can't, real. That can't, that, that's that's a, phenomenal. That's, that's real. A, that's a rat taking a shower like an old man. Like an old man. Look, he's sitting under the arms and rubbing his belly and lathering all up. Oh, all God. he needs to do is sing. He just needs to sing. That can't be real. What is that? Am I being? Well, you know, rats are pretty intelligent. Am I being fooled by a fake animal again? How talking? they get? How they get footage of me in the shower? I don't think so, Dan. If somebody did that fake, they need a big job in Hollywood because those special oh. effects are amazing. Wow, that's believe that's for that. You need to you need to send that out. That's a fantastic video. You're seeing that that is simply a rat that oh. is taking a shower. It's cleaning in all the nether regions. No, and, 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 and it's standing on its two hind legs like a human being. It's, so it's standing up and it's going underneath its arms and it's oh doing the back. God, of but no, but it is scrubbing vigorously the area between its legs. <laughs> everything. <laughs> It's he a, doesn't want any jock itch. That's great. Uh, all right. Very good. See you later, Rob. <laughs> Take care, yeah, guys. Great video. It really is. Don Lebertard. That guy's an idiot. He's not smart at life. He's not smart at books. There He's not go. smart at people. He's not smart at interesting radio. He's not smart. But that person has listened to the show every day for the last six years. Should stop now. Stugatz. I wonder, though, if it's on us. Not on us. We're great. <laughs> awesome. Ah. Best hour ever. Yes! yes it's been our ever. best hour in best six hour. years. Yes. Best hour. Double metal fingers to you, best idiot hour. moron jackal. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> that hour just won a Marconi. What do you think of that? I don't even know what a Marconi is. <laughs> really? <laughs> you <laughs> ruined it. We had a flow going. We had it going. That guy's Pasta, right. right. This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Chris Sims joins us on the Shell Penzoil performance line to give us all his 36th best quarterback in the NFL. Almost halfway there. <laughs> Tomorrow we will be halfway there on the list of Chris Sims quarterbacks. He started with Blake Bortles at number 70 and said he can name 7 to 69 quarterbacks better than Blake Bortles. It is absolutely genius what he's done and I'm proud of him because it's he's kept it relevant. His list, he has pivoted from this is no longer the Blake Bortles list. It is the Eli Manning By list. By 38, yes. Eli Manning was 38. So now the 36th the best quarterback in the world according to Chris Sims of Bleacher Report, and this quarterback is also better than Eli Manning. That quarterback is number 36. Tell us, Chris Sims. Colt McCoy, Washington Redskins. Oh, wow. Wow. Colt so you, McCoy. you have the Redskins backup being better than both the Giants quarterbacks? <laughs> yes, I do. I know. Yes, I'm not saying he's, you know, again, let's just make sure it's clear to the public out there. This is not saying he's an all-time better quarterback, Colt McCoy, than Eli Manning. But in 2017, going into 2018, yes, I think he is better. All right. We will All talk right. to you tomorrow, sir. Oh. Thank you. This list has gotten scintillating. Yes. See you guys. Be good. See you guys. <laughs> At Levitard Show on Twitter is where and how you vote on our polls. Stugatz is going to update us. I believe this show is going to end an ar- end in an argument over though this fifty hawks and three brown bears situation. <laughs> That's what I predict. Uh, at Levitard Show on Twitter is Dan right to feel disrespected by Greg Cody continually not doing back in my day. This one didn't go well for you, Greg. People love you, but they'll turn on you quickly. Ninety percent of the audience said yes. Greg Cody just sat out his back in my day because he didn't feel like doing it. Travesty. 
was Dan having a tirade against the global sport? 91% of the audience said yes. Oh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> you were. Though. I was not tirading <laughs> against the global sport. Did you know that Pong was the first video game ever? It's not, but whatever. 77% <laughs> of the audience said yes. Did you love Logan? 52% of the audience said yes. See? See? I told you, Logan. <laughs> I told happen? you, Logan. What happened there? <laughs> I told you. <laughs> you Jackman. Should you be offended that That's What I Like was the song of the year? 75% of the audience said yes. See? I've been right today. <laughs> See? <laughs> Do you want us to talk to the Atari cheat? 69% of the audience said yes. What's worse? <laughs> Your timing was so crappy. My there. timing? I was trying to feed him a Pete Mars joke. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, Peter Mars, my bad. What's worse? Hailing Satan? <laughs> <laughs> or pantomiming? <laughs> wiping your rear with an award? Pantomiming's a tough one for you, huh? Pantomiming. No, it was fine. I was just laughing through it. That's actually an easy one for me. You've been... I don't know. It's weird. Why? Wow, that's an easy one okay. for me. The one that scared me most there was uh, rear. All right. So <laughs> oddly defensive about this. <laughs> yes. What is pantomiming? Easy. What is worse? Easy, easy. Hailing Satan. What was that? Portugal, the man. What's worse? Hailing Satan or pantomiming? Wiping your rear with an award. Fifty-two percent of the audience at hailing Satan. Mm, close one. Wow. It really was controversial. Tight. Is it Canucks or Canucks? I was wrong. 83% of the audience said it was Canucks. <laughs> Are you surprised Kenny G doesn't have more groupies? Doesn't have any groupies. That he admits. 76% of the audience said yes. Should there be groupies awaiting Kenny G wherever he lands the beaver? <laughs> I wasn't you guys that. are children. You're just you're, well, you know, you're, you're not you're expecting all, it. You you're know. all nine years old. Yeah, we're all in middle you're school. All nine years old. Eighty nine percent of the audience said yes. Does Wolf Blitzer think that Anderson Cooper is the face of CNN? Fifty one percent of the audience said no. Did you know that Bill Parcells' real name is Dwayne? <laughs> this really and this is the week of Bill and Bill. Yeah, Bill, Bill and Dwayne. And so, yes. but wait a minute, Bill Belichick's name is not actually Belichick. It's, it's the not, two Bills. Yeah. It's Belichick spells it differently, and Bill Parcells' his name is Dwayne. Yes, eighty-eight uh, percent of the audience had no idea that it was Dwayne Parcells, <laughs> the big tuna. <laughs> so let's go back to this again: fifty hawks, ten crocodiles, three brown bears, seven Cape buffalo, one hunter with a shotgun. Unlimited ammo, 15 wolves, 10,000 rats, five gorillas, four lions. You must pick two of these options to defend yourself while the rest are coming to kill you. I feel like you got to go 10,000 rats there, don't well, you? Well, I feel like I had the right option. I feel like if you have a shotgun plus 10,000 rats surrounding you, you're well protected there, mm -hmm. no? I wonder if a rat will eat a human being. I was going to ask my This was the Dan Levatar Show on ESPN Radio. All right, bye.